You're very welcome back. So St. Louis is the focus this evening for Irish football for a second game against the USA in just three days. Ireland were beaten 2-0 on Saturday evening in Texas. Kickoff is in a few hours' time, half past 12 a.m. Wednesday morning Irish time. Karen Duggan, former Republic of Ireland international, is with us. Most importantly, of course, a proud card-carrying member of the Koi Gig podcast. Karen, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Kathleen McNamee would kill me if I didn't mention that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Let's talk about Saturday evening, if we could. It was a 2-0 defeat, but uh, the general consensus, lots of positives for Ireland. They created several very good chances, including before the US managed to open uh, their account. They looked very well organised in defence in the main. Vera Pau was effusive about the debut of Sinead Farrelly. So against world number one side, that's very acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very acceptable. Definitely a lot of positives to take from it. Um, I don't think we were looking at the World Cup champions, looking at the way the US played. Um, I thought they were very slow to start. But again, they were stifled by Ireland, the way we set up. Um, there was absolutely no spaces on the wings uh, because we obviously had our wing backs quite deep for the majority of the game, bar the times that Heather Payne was able to kind of foray forward by linking up um, with Sinead Farley. So it was good to kind of see her in a different position. I thought that was a, another positive. Um, and obviously two debutants, we saw young Tara O'Hanlon getting on as well. So definitely a lot of positives, um, but also a few things just to tidy up on. So it was a good learning experience as well, I think. Uh, the formation for people who didn't see the game, you referenced it there, very much five at the back um, and then uh, midfield of three and one and one ahead of them, depending on how the game was unfolding. And that will, I suspect, most likely be Ireland's way of manoeuvring through what is a very difficult World Cup group. So in that sense, USA, very good opposition for Ireland to road test a rear guard action, working off scraps at times and, and trying to be as defensively robust as possible. Is that is that how you picture Ireland setting up come July 20th? Yeah, I don't think it will move away from how we were in qualification. Um, we very much approached the Sweden game like we were the underdogs and managed to frustrate them. And I think that that was kind of the blueprint print then for how we're going to look to the World Cup group, um, particularly in that opener against Australia um, with the crowd and with the occasion, it's going to be very important that we can kind of stay in the game for as long as possible. So I think that that formation kind of lends itself to that. Um, I think the American game, again, was a good, it was a good showpiece. You know, they had another person, they had... Um, Julie Earths getting a presentation before the game, you know, huge stadium. So it'll be another experience in front of a massive crowd that the girls had to manage. Um, so that was another positive that I think we can take from the game. But yeah, in, in terms of having a huge amount of possession, um, I think we, we knew we wouldn't have that against the Americans um, and Again, I think we're going to be quite reliant on, on set pieces and stuff. So I think when Megan Campbell comes back with that throw, that'll be really good. Um, I don't think we saw as much down the left as we usually do with Katie up a little bit higher. Um, obviously, her attacking talents are kind of stagnated a little bit by being in that left fullback position. But I'd be very hopeful that that's not where we're going to see her um, come the World Cup. Uh, what chances will we not see there against Australia, Canada, Nigeria? Because it is... Uh a tough group, you think she will be further up or will Vera Pau ultimately uh, caution, stay in the game first? Katie, you're going to be left. Well, I think, I think we can cautionally stay in the game as long as Megan Campbell is uh, back there because she is that natural, natural left footer on that side. Mm. Um, she gets us out of a lot of trouble just defensively, even with the throw. We always talk about the attacking threat it brings, but when you're under severe pressure for a long period of time and you can get up the pitch with just a throw in that's that's a brilliant weapon and I'd imagine that if she is available for those World Cup games yeah. that she will go into that position and it'll allow Katie to push forward um, into we, we need her in, in terms of creativity um, up there she she is behind Denise just on the goal scoring ranks she's very potent in front of goals she offers a lot of threat there mm. um, and like we do, we need to have the likes of her and Denise on the ball more and not just defending in deep areas. Yes. Uh, Denise O'Sullivan in particular, 
I mean, she's so good out of possession. She, she's probably enormously underrated out of possession. Uh, like her speed over the ground, the, the, the manner in which she can win back possession routinely is, I suspect, underrated. But geez, I mean, even again, watching on Saturday, there are times where you watch her on the ball and she's like borderline immaculate. And I do think I feel sorry for her at times being stuck in a team that's not possession based. I could imagine her, to be frank, if she was in the US team or one of the better sides in the world, uh, absolutely running the show and being talked about as one of the world's best players. Absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. Like, I think Denise could legitimately make any international team in the world yeah. because she does not make mistakes. Um, like you say, out of possession, I've I've never seen her pushed off a ball. The amount of scrappy ball that Denise wins for her size is incredible, but it's because she's actually really, really strong. Um, and when she receives the ball, she always seems to have space, but it's literally just because her body shape is, is always brilliant. She's always on the half turn. She's so aware of the space around her. And when she does have possession, she's always really influential with it, which is great. I think having Megan Connolly back in midfield gives her a little bit more freedom. I think Megan's really good at that at that role, kind of protecting the back four. So in a game, maybe not quite against the world number ones, we will get to see Denise a little bit more in possession. But I think it it does depend as well on us having more possession. I think that that comes with Katie being higher up the pitch as well. Like she's really good at ball retention and she's really clever on the ball and she'll allow the midfielders to get up in support. Um, so the positioning of those two players is going to be huge for us. I'd like to see Denise not as dragged back in front of the back four as she certainly was against um, the Chinese game. I thought that she was dragged back way too far, but maybe that was just because Megan Connolly was back in centre back with with Lily Ag because Lily Ag's a bit more attacking as well. So, yeah, um, yeah I, like you say, Denise is is crucial to us yeah. if we're going to create from from open play. Yeah. But otherwise, we're going to be looking at set pieces. Yeah, it does feel that way. I, I mean, again, I watching and on on the on Saturday and on the understanding that she's on the lesser team, I still thought she was the best player on the pitch. To be frank, and what I love about her and respect about her is she would have every right occasionally, and I say this with the greatest respect to her teammates who are all doing great things in the game as well. But she would have the right at times to throw her hands up a touch in frustration when they've been without the ball for a while and she'll trap it neatly and get Ireland moving again and it's given away too cheaply. She never does that. There's never a vibe of, guys, why can't you all pass like me? I know, yeah. Um, and it's because of how much she loves playing for Ireland. She does really see that as the pinnacle of um, your footballing career. She always has and she's always applied herself brilliantly um, from day one, she's literally the ultimate professional. Even the first goal we conceded, you could see that she initiated the press and people didn't come with her. And yeah. you could see her gesturing to get people out with her and they didn't. But again, she just would have said that in a professional manner and been, let's let's be better in the next occasion. She won't have, she didn't have let it affect her game or she wouldn't have lambasted anyone behind her. Um, but like I say, she probably would be well within her right yeah. to do that. And yeah, it was great, great to see her with that captain's armband because she's just been such a stalwart since the very first time I think she made her debut maybe against Scotland it was well before I made my debut that just kind of shows the player she is she's never really missed the game for injury or anything like that she's just top top professional yeah. in every sense of the word yeah she's a freak you couldn't say enough yeah. good things about her she's pr possibly Ireland's most underrated sports person at the moment um, I believe so yeah definitely yeah I would think so uh, you referenced the China game I, like mm -hmm. I find that I found that game so dispiriting I have to say, because Ireland yeah. were trying to play through the lines. And, and afterwards, Vera Pau said that Ireland passed the ball very well. And I was scratching my head because Ireland did not pass the ball very well. It was worryingly bad. They didn't create... We barely passed the ball. Oh, it, like, it, yeah. it, was, it was very dispiriting, like I say. Um, even though Saturday was a more defensive, orientated performance, Ireland managed to create more chances for whatever reason. Go, going direct uh, seems to suit them as a team and, 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 and not... That's their most likely way it feels of, of, of creating chances as opposed to, again, there are parallels maybe with the Irish men's side at the moment, as opposed to uh, passing a side to death. It's, it's quick attacking direct football. That doesn't mean aimless long ball, but direct football. Yeah, and I think that having Heather Payne, who's a more natural attacking wing back, um, is crucial to that because it's just about getting the bodies up, higher up the pitch in order to create those kind of triangles and stuff like that we managed to get a few crosses into the box from the right hand side which um previously in the china game i felt like heather she was up front and she was still 
having to come out to the right and drift and she was almost isolated up there by herself whereas now she was joining in the attack with the right sided midfielder and Caruso up front who I thought really put her hand up for a position as well um, like I said it was few and far between when she did get passes to feet but when she did I felt like she, she used it very well and brought other players into the game and when she is going to be bringing the likes of Katie and Denise into the game hopefully yeah. in a game where we have a bit more possession um, that'll be really really important so I think that she's definitely put her hands up for a spot and I think it was kind of about time that she got given a, a bit of um, a bit of a chance because we were very very slow to use the bench in the, the qualifying campaign so it was good to see some changes in that America game. Karen can I ask you about Sinead Farrelly at 33 mm-hmm. years of age making her debut and Easter weekend and resurrections and headlines writing themselves and all that. So this is a genuinely extraordinary story. She was away from the game for six, seven years. She played for the US at under 17s, 20s and 23 level. Her career was interrupted by a one a car crash, but secondly, her allegations of sexual coercion and harassment against Paul Riley at Philadelphia, New York Fury in Portland. So she took a break for six years. She came out of retirement last summer. And is her inclusion here, did this come totally out of left field? Did this catch everyone by surprise? It certainly caught me by surprise and I'm sure a lot of people because we always, a topic of conversation around the national team is always around who's getting good game time. You know, they're going professional, who's getting good game time. And now we've got someone coming in after seven years, she's maybe played 20 minutes of competitive football. Now, granted, it's for the in and at the NWSL, which is really high level, but um it can be a bit contradictory to some of the conversations we're having where we're like, oh, such and such isn't getting game time. But Vera obviously sees something in her that she feels is really going to add to this team. Uh, I mean, she was absolutely waxing lyrical about her after the game. So um, what she's brought to this camp has obviously made a a massive impression because it sounds like she's guaranteed a spot on the plane, which I I suppose is a massive story. Massive. I I, I I thought this was amazing. The extent to which... Pow, in the midst of like a lot of competition for places on that plane, Pow effectively said, well, OK, that was off the charts good. Uh, this player actually changes how we can play. Like tactically, we're sort of transformed almost, to paraphrase. And once the fitness thing is ticked off, which it basically will be, yes, she'll probably be on the plane. So uh, like that, that sense of, oh, we're transformed a little bit here tactically as much as anything... What does she mean by that? And do you agree? It seemed, I mean, I, 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 she was... It's a little s- over the top, I thought I it was, yeah. yeah. It's a little over the top. I mean, I thought she was very, very tidy in possession and we needed a little bit of respite the odd time, um, which was good. Again, I think it was helped by the fact that Heather was a very supporting right wing back. Um, but again, we, there must be stuff that she's seen in training that technically... I think it was just that she kept the ball very, very well. And yeah. when we're out of possession for so long, that's that can't be underestimated. And I thought that Carusa did the same thing. So I thought that she probably should have come in for the same amount of praise. Um, but look, it's, a, it's a, a brilliant story. But again, like you just, the sentimentality in you would kind of feel sorry for the girls who've obviously been in and around the squad for the qualifying campaign. And now they know that there's one other place mm. almost definitely gone. Um and the fitness thing is going to be huge. And I don't know what your opinion is, but saying that she's not going to start her in this next game is the balance between threatening injury or getting competitive yes. international football, which is kind of I don't know. better. I, I, I would think if you've played 20 minutes in six years and you do an hour, I would say she's been in an ice bath ever since. I, I, yeah, I, probably. I, yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, it's just I'd love to get another chance to look at her as well. Um but, uh, yeah, well, it doesn't sound like we will get that. For a group that, like, uh, have many attributes, one of them being, uh, like, just such a visible team spirit, uh, Pow is walking a delicate line here. Yeah, it is. Um, but the girls are always going to speak out and say, oh, look, it, it's a professional setup. You have to pick your best player for the World Cup to give yourself the best chance. Yeah. Um, but, like, obviously, it's it's really hard on players. They form relationships, they form friendships in there. And if those are a little bit disrupted by players, obviously, coming in at a very, very late stage, particularly um, players who've come in under the, the granny rule or whatever, it, it'll, it'll be sour for those players. But I guess 
come into the World Cup, they're not going to allow themselves to have any bitterness or anything to affect the dressing room dynamic. Everyone's going to be more than welcoming to everyone who's involved and everyone's going to be pulling in the, the same direction for that. But um, yeah, it's going to be a bitter pill to swallow for the girls who ultimately don't make what is the 23, like even from what's gone to America, there's a, there's a good few to be cut from that. And you've guaranteed starters, I think, come back in, Lee Fahey, Megan Campbell as well. So, mm. um, yeah, it's, 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 it's so talked about now as well, who will be on that plane. It's, yeah. it's more talked about than any other major tournament squad I think we've sent over men or otherwise. Yeah, big time. There's going to be a nervous tension in the air as this uh, deadline looms. Ireland's physicality has been a talking point of sorts. I mean, I, the US coach didn't have a problem with the way Ireland went about their business. It seems that somebody looked online where, you know, everybody can say anything and it was put to pow and she rejected that Ireland were overly physical. I have to say that that was an aspect of the performance I really liked about Ireland. Like there, there was a, a moment where Megan Connolly got between Courtney Brosnan, an American player, and gave her a proper but very fair dunt. Um, mm. And look, it's not, you know, Mallory Swanson got almost, you know, a neck injury um, going into Brosnan as well. But I, I thought in the main it walked a really good line of I wouldn't be worried about yellow cards or discipline issues. But it, do it like if that's an attribute of this team, they should lean into that because I thought it was really good. Absolutely. It was really good kind of controlled aggression yeah. um, throughout. I, think, I don't think it's fair to say that this is an over-physical team. The only people I really see going to ground in hard tackles would be Megan Connolly, Katie and maybe Diane. Um, Diane was got a bit overzealous, obviously, for the penalty. But other than that, it's a pretty controlled aggression in terms of just closing down spaces and getting in the opposition faces. Obviously, we've got a lot of players behind the ball, and that's frustrating for opposition. We are gonna, you're gonna kick a little bit at players who are slightly better than you. You want to get in their heads. You want to. You have to acknowledge that we're playing against opposition that are of a higher caliber and you have to, like you say, lean into your strengths and the yeah. aggression and willingness to work of this team is one of them. Some people will interpret that as physicality, but I don't see it that over physicality. I don't see it that way as at all. I think it's a testament to the fitness levels and the strength levels that the, the girls have um, gotten to. Karen, to set up this evening or this morning game, or this morning's game rather. So this match at St. Louis, it, it is a tale probably of different priorities in that Vera Pau is resting Aoife Mannion and is resting Sinead Farrelly, as we've mentioned. Uh, but in the main is going with a, a pretty strong team again. She has talked about trying to take the lessons from Saturday and to implement them again this evening. Whereas the US uh, pretty much said they will make wholesale changes and even... I mean, again, this really emphasised the difference in priorities. Becky Sauerbrunn is making her 216th, which is nuts, uh, appearance. And for all of her caps, she's never managed to score a goal. So like the US has spent the last few days coming up with a set piece, which will hopefully let Becky score. So again, uh, different priorities this evening. What are you expecting? I keep saying this not the, tonight, but this morning, whichever, mm -hmm. you take my point. Um, I think from Ireland, again, it will be more of the same. I think that, like Vera said, she's not going to change things up too much. I'd love to see someone else playing left back to to get Katie okay. in that higher so position. That's, that's a big one go. for you. That's a non-negotiable. You do not want Katie McCabe at left wing back for Ireland. I don't want Katie McCabe left wing back for Ireland. Um, no, but then you're looking at who's going to replace her, Tara Hanlon. She's, she's just turned 18. Um, obviously, it would be amazing for her, but you're looking again at the Americans, whoever they bring in, even if they do wholesale changes, their top quality. I thought Julie Ertz, when she came on, was very influential, to be fair. When she came in, she's, she was quite physical and she she got on the ball quite a bit for the limited amount of time that she was on the pitch. Um, yeah, America, I think, I think America were maybe a little bit complacent against us in the last game, so... I'd expect them to come out of the traps a little bit quicker. Um, they should know what to expect from Ireland now. So you'd have thought that they'd come up with a, a different plan. But then again, the Americans are probably egotistical in how they play, that they won't think that they should approach a game against Ireland in, in any other way than they've done for... They play their own game, they'll put it that way. But... Um, I think Ireland will be the tireder of the two teams, obviously, if we're not going to make as many changes. So I don't, I wouldn't expect the result to be much better than what we achieved. The 2-0 was actually very good, how we yeah. managed to to kind of fend off clear-cut chances. We were never broken down. Um, and because of the way we play the tactics, the five at the back, I, I'd expect more of the same, but possibly a few tired lebs might creep in. So yeah. a little, I expect a, a, a low-scoring loss. 
Uh, final thought then, uh, Group B is very much on the horizon. Two teams will advance from Australia, Canada, Nigeria. We will have three matches in eight days, 8,000 kilometres to be covered. Australia and Sydney, which will be an extraordinary occasion, it must be said. That's July 20th. They're number 13 seeds and will have home advantage despite the expat community, which will certainly turn out for Ireland. Mm -hmm. Then Canada is in Perth six days later, Olympic gold medalists. Nigeria in Brisbane, July 31st, the African champions. Uh, Canada and Nigeria being as as, as tough an opponent, uh, which could have come out of their respective uh, seedings pool. So it wasn't a, a favourable draw in many ways. What are your optimism levels like as we speak here in April? Um, well, look, Scotland have just beaten Australia in a friendly um, we've beaten Australia before you know it's doable I think that's a game we can certainly target getting something from I know it's going to be a massive occasion and nerves might pay a factor and you'd imagine the Australians going on home turf would want to make an impact but I think they they can target something from that game I'm a little bit more afraid of the other two games because Canada like you say big, powerful and strong. So I think getting this America game is good preparation for them. Australia are a bit more, less predictable than Canada, but Canada are probably a higher quality side. Um, and then I don't know if we're fully prepared for what Nigeria can bring because we don't have much to go on, um, given the fact that a lot of their players don't return home for friendlies because they play in Spain and things like that. So, nice. um, God, I think if we got like a dream scenario would be obviously a win in the first game and two, I think a draw and another win. But if we got two draws even out of that group, I think it can be something to hold your head really high about. A really, really tough opposition. Okay. Really tough. And I think that would make an impression on the World Cup, coming away with points, coming away, having given the fans something to um, to shout about. Very good. Uh, the Kogig pod is out tomorrow, I'm told. Yes. Very good. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Karen. Thanks, Joe. Cheers. Karen Duggan with us, giving us uh, her take on uh, Ireland at the weekend into uh, this evening's game. Half past 12, Wednesday morning, uh, Irish time, a uh, kickoff. And our football show coverage is brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports.